In this video, we'll apply hyperlasting material property to stress concentration problem and see what happens. That is, when plate is pulled in actual direction, the stress increase around the hole compared to far field stress. Mesh density was used to this extent. The plate dimensions are 10 mm by 20 mm and the diameter of the hole is 4 mm. Actually, we use the same hyperelastic material property as in the previous video, which explains in detail how to model hyperelastic material in Abacus. That is, we use 6 point test data for hyperelastic material property and the most basic. Marlow material model is used again. Then let's take a look at the stress concentration. The problem that we want to deal with is like this. There is a hole in the middle of the plate. The plate has a width of W and the hole diameter D. Then as the ratio of D over W decreased, the maximum stress at the edge of the hole increase, like this graph. The ratio of the maximum stress over nominal stress is varying from 2 to 3. By the way, what is the nominal stress? Well, the nominal stress is defined like this. The applied constant force P at the both edge divided by W minus D times H. That is the constant force applied reason. Then in our problem, D was a 4 millimeter and W is 10 millimeter. So D over W X is 0.4. Therefore read the Y value at the x equal 0.4, then the stress concentration factor kt becomes 2.23. Now let's calculate the, this kt value by directly FEA results. We got 2.29. It's almost identical value, right? In this case, actually, it's an elastic problem with a very small deformation. Now we want to see what it looks like when we solve the exactly same problem but applying hyperelastic property that can allow large deformation. Well let's take a look at the FA results. Yes the stress concentration factor increased up to 2.98. If you look at the deformation shape because of very large displacement, the circular shape of the hole is almost changed into elliptical shape. It's getting thinner. Actually, as you can see from this result, I incorrectly applied one boundary condition. The bottom surface of plate can be stretched out in Y direction without X direction constraint. It was my right intention, but on the top surface of plate, by mistake, I just fixed all direction displacement. That's why we have this narrowing phenomenon. However, we are only interested in this area around the hole. Our FA result will be fine. Let's look at the strain. You can see the maximum strain occur at the inner surface of the hull. Um, the strain decrease at the edge of plate. Naturally, Y direction stress S22 and form misses equivalent to stress also show the same pattern of recharge, right? Then let's look at how stress trains along this section from hull edge to plate edge. First, let's see the S22. It increased from about 150 to about 
400. It increased relatively gradually like this, 150, 350, but kT equals 2.98. It's a larger value. Let's look at elastic case again. 0 0.04, 0 0.16. It increased steeply. It's almost more than quadruple. Nevertheless, the stress constraint factor kT is 2.29. It's a closer to theoretical value, right? Let's see again hyperelastic case. It's from 150 to 400. Increase was a little bit more than 2, but stress constraint factor kT is 2.98, the larger value. It sounds contradictory, right? But actually, the reason for this can be explained the uh, stress constraint factor definition and the large deformation effect. First, let's look at the deformation for both cases in elastic and hyperelastic case. If we have elastic case, then deformed shape of the structure will be almost identical to the original shape. But in hyperelastic case, we have larger elongation. That's why we have the deformed shape like this way. It will be narrow and it has a, a larger deformation and will have elliptical shape of the hull. Finally, we have very narrow nominal region compared to elastic case. So in terms of stress variation, this one is a hole. This point is a plate edge. In elastic case, we have stress variation like this. Very steep variation. And here is the maximum stress. This is a minimum stress. In hypoelastic case, we have a larger level of stress, but relatively smooth variation. At this time, maximum stress will be higher, and minimum stress is also higher. But for both cases, we have the same number of nominal stress because nominal stress is defined by applied force P divided by W times H. But maximum stress increased. So even though there is a strict variation of stress in elastic case, stress concentration turns out to be very close to theoretical value 2.23. On the other hand, in hyperelastic case, even though there is a gradual variation of stress, stress concentration factor is much larger than elastic case. The value was 2.9a. That's why it sounds contradictory, but it's a right story. Okay, let's move to uh, Avacus modeling. Okay, before moving Avacus modeling, Let's look at the FA result first. I will change the common view option. Here are four misses equivalent to stress. Let's look at vertical stress. And deformation looks like this. There are large elongation, right? On top of surface, we have fixed boundary condition. Let's look at the stress variation along this section. Create XY data through path one. We we'll choose final step. Okay, vertical stress. Here we go. 
we have stress radiation through that path one. Now look at another important part of abacus modeling material. Hyperelastic, isotropic model, test data, exactly the same as before, we have six-point data. Let's evaluate the material model. Polynomial, reduced polynomial, and model. Here we go. In all case, our results are stable, particularly in model case. In graph, blue line is the model, yellow line is reduced polynomial. These two models actually good agreement with the test data. So basically, model model is right choice for our model. Okay, let's move to Avacus modeling.